Hey guys, I'm Hop for TFB TV. About at the range today with two new pistols from Sky. One of them is the newest generation of the CPX2 9mm. The other one is the optics ready version of the DVG1, also in 9mm. We saw both of these pistols at SHOT Show 2022. Now I've got them out at the range. It's time to see how they shoot. Stick around. I reviewed one of these Sky CPX pistols a very long time ago, but I think it's a good time for a bit of a refresher. The CPX-1 and CPX-2 are Sky's original handgun designs. They are compact, double-action only, internal hammer-fired pistols feeding from 10-round magazines of 9mm. The CPX-1 has a manual safety, the CPX-2 does not. I have the CPX-2 for review, which is the version with no manual safety. In my opinion, the long, heavy double-action trigger pull is plenty safe on its own without the manual safety, so the CPX-2 is definitely my preferred model. The new Generation 3 of the CPX pistols have a new slide profile. It's squared on the top to facilitate the mounting of a red dot. They also have a new sight pattern, compatible with Glock 43 sights. These pistols are available with and without an optics cut. The frame on the Generation 3s is also updated, it drops the finger grooves from the older models, and it also has a new safety lever design on the CPX-1 that eliminates a troublesome hotspot the old pistols had. The new frame also adds a very small two-slot accessory rail on the dust cover, we'll talk about that in a little bit. The other pistol I have for review is the DVG-1, this one's also in 9mm and feeds from the same 10 round magazines as the CPX-1 and CPX-2. The DVG-1 is a single-action striker-fired gun. No manual safety, no re-strike or double-action mode. The DVG-1 is sort of a Gen 2.5 pistol for Sky. It still has the finger grooves and no accessory rail like the earlier versions of the CPX. The DVG-1 is also available with or without an optics cut. Like with the Generation 3 CPX-2, the optics cut is in front of the rear sight. Some of the older optics-ready versions of the Sky Pistols had the optics cut completely replace the rear sight. Not the case anymore. The optics-ready versions of both of these guns use the J-Point or Shield RMSC optics pattern. The CPX Gen 3 I have for review is not the optics-ready version, but the DVG-1 is. However, I'm not using optics on either gun. Underneath the optics cut cover on the DVG-1 is a ceiling plate. It holds in a spring that looks like it's part of the firing pin block mechanism. The ceiling plate adds a bit of height to the red dot mount, and also the DVG-1 has very deeply chamfered screw holes. I wanted to shoot this with a Crimson Trace Rad Micro Pro for the synergistic dual review action, but I'm pretty sure it would just fly off under recoil. None of the screws that come with any of the micro red dots in my inventory look like they would get enough purchase on the slide. So I just shot both of these pistols with the factory 3 dot plastic sights, and I ran into a problem right away. All right, so this is a partially reused target, so just ignore these three shots, sight-in groups from a rifle caliber. Not important. Also, <laughs> there's a lot of shrapnel in here from a nearby steel target. Also, don't worry about that. Anyway, top left, bottom left, CPX-2. Top right, bottom right, uh, the DVG-1. You can see there's an immediate problem. The CPX-2 sights are regulated super far left, way too far and way too consistently to be a flinch particularly at this range, and the DVG-1 sights are regulated way too high. So this is our three shots, two went off the top of the paper, and here's our five shots. That's a flyer, but there's our group. So these uh, sights are really badly regulated um, out of the box. This is a correctable problem. Both of these pistols have drift adjustable rear sights, and I'm also noticing that the rear sight on the DVG-1 is riding a little bit high in the dovetail. I think the screw, the set screw, was over torqued, and it sort of pushed the sight out of position. So I'm going to try to loosen that, pound it back into position, and see if we can get this going again. The rear sight sits somewhat loosely in the rear sight dovetail, and it's held in place by tension from a screw in the rear sight. However, if you torque the screw too hard, the sight gets pushed up in the dovetail. If you don't torque the screw enough, the sight is so loose it falls out with no pressure at all. If you tighten it too much, the sight pushes up and you hit way high. I tried to ride the line on the DVG-1 sights to keep them low, but still snug. I thought I had it until I got home and found the sight loose in the pistol case. It just fell out on the ride home. This is sort of an odd design. I'm gonna guess that a Glock-compatible replacement rear sight would fit nice and snug in the pistol. These aren't really target sights, so the tension screw drift adjustment system seems unnecessary. Just give me a properly regulated fixed sight, and I'll be happy. 
If you mounted a red dot to either of these pistols, this would be irrelevant, since the rear sight isn't tall enough to co-witness through the optic. You can, however, just barely co-witness the front sight with the notches that are built into a lot of J-point pattern dots, like the Crimson Trace Red Micro, the Holosun K series, and the Romeo Zero series. Here's what we got from the CPX with the sights originally. After drifting them, we're here. Definitely better. Uh, brought the group of the DVG-1 down a little bit, but, you know, could have been a little bit farther. Unfortunately, I think the sights on that one are just beyond rescue at this point. Okay, so obviously the big difference between these two pistols is the trigger. The DVG-1 still holds onto the finger grooves, but they don't have much effect on how the gun handles, and I'm sure the next-gen DVG-1 will have the improved frame design of the CPX-2. Both pistols are available with and without an optics cut, so really the deciding factor between them is the trigger. The CPX-2 trigger is a long, heavy, 9-pound double action. The pole is smooth and predictable, so I don't find it much harder to shoot in slow fire than the DVG-1. The single action striker trigger on the DVG-1 is also fairly heavy, about 5.5 pounds, but the big difference is in the travel. When you start shooting faster, the shorter travel and shorter reset of the DVG-1 trigger pays dividends. You may or may not be able to tell on video, but I was able to make faster, consistent hits with the DVG-1. I'm going to try to speed things up a little bit here, see how the triggers make a difference between the double action only CPX-2 and the uh, striker fired DVG-1. Same thing now with the DVG-1. I'm going to go a little bit faster and uh, see how that trigger treats us. I'm pretty sure that's me riding the uh, slide release, but the gun does seem a little hesitant to lock back just normally. Not really sure. Anyway, uh, the takeaway, if I just dry fire these guns side by side, I almost feel like I prefer the CPX-2. Something about that smooth double action feels better to me, but when you actually speed up, I mean, there is absolutely no question you can run this one way faster than the CPX-2. And if uh, we had an optic on there, I mean, forget about it. This thing would absolutely outperform the CPX-2. In my opinion, both triggers are fine carry triggers that don't demand a manual safety at all. The bigger reason to consider the DVG-1 over the CPX-2 is that heavy, double-action-only triggers take a lot of practice. Call me a cynic, but I don't think most people in the market for a very inexpensive handgun are going to dedicate the time and round count to becoming proficient with a difficult trigger like the one on the CPX-2. The rail on the Generation 3 CPX pistols also isn't much of a selling point since it's really small. I'm not sure what you could mount up there, and if you did, it would just make finding a good holster that much more difficult. So the DVG-1 looks like the better pistol in almost all ways, but for some reason I still kind of prefer the CPX-2. Some of that is the updated Gen 3 grip. I think it looks better and it feels better, but overall the CPX is a more mature design. Shooting the CPX-2 was not eventful, whereas the DVG-1 has an erratic and worrisome ejection pattern. The heavy double-action trigger of the CPX series doesn't really bother me either. I used to carry a Beretta Nano, so I guess my standards are pretty low. If you were to mount a red dot to the optics-ready version of the CPX-2, I think you would find that a red dot can make for a very good dry-fire practice tool, and that could lessen the adjustment period to that long, heavy double-action trigger if you are diligent about your dry-fire practice. Quite badly pinched by the uh, magazine to magwell interface. I think it's one of the unavoidable side effects of using the magazine base plate as part of the grip. Very pinchy. But I might have to play my contrarian trump card here and say that you can live without a red dot on your carry pistol. Can they make you faster and more accurate? Yes, but the most important factor of the carry gun is, as Paul Harrell would say, program compliance. Knowing how to draw and shoot your handgun 
and having it with you. If you're working on a budget, your money should go towards the gun and the ammo before it goes to the red dot. Sky's pistols aren't the most refined high-speed carry guns on the market, but they are affordable. The Gen 3 CPX2 has an MSRP of $300 or $340 with the optics cut. Typical street price of the CPX is usually around or under $250, so expect the optics ready version to fall to around that price after it's been out for a while. The guns do come with two magazines and flush fit base plates included, so they're not trying to cheese the MSRP by leaving out all the goodies. Sky definitely seems to be paying attention to what people want out of their guns, and the Gen 3 pistols have a lot of improvements over the last version. I bet a new generation of the DVG-1 is on the horizon that incorporates the Gen 3 improvements from the CPX-2, and probably adds on a few new ones as well. I doubt Sky is done improving these pistols. If they want to take some unsolicited advice from some YouTube jerk with a Glock collection and a superiority complex, let's see a generation 3.5 version of the DVG-1, adopting the smooth grip frame from the CPX-2, omitting the accessory rail that you are not going to use anyway, and swapping the adjustable sight for a basic fixed metal 3-dot set. I think they're up to the challenge. Thanks for watching, guys. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors, Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. If you like this channel and you would like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. That's how YouTube's worked for the last 15 years, at least. You can also support this channel directly via Subscribestar and Utreon. Links to both of those are in the video description. We still maintain a legacy Patreon page, but they don't let us do the fun giveaways anymore, so if you want to be eligible for that stuff, make sure you switch over to Subscribestar or Utreon, both of which are significantly more gun-friendly than Patreon. See you guys next time.